What if you could turn the millions of power poles around the country into EV chargers? For lots of people, a lack of charging infrastructure is the biggest barrier to buying an electric vehicle, especially for apartment owners and those who don't have off-street parking. You could be sitting there for an hour waiting for a charging spot. He doesn't have off-street parking and it's illegal to run an extension cord out to the street. It would be nice to have the option to do it at home, but we just don't. It's just one of the teething problems of electric vehicles. Advocates say more charging stations and government incentives are needed. You envisage a future where a lot of the power poles on this street have an EV charger on them. You don't need dedicated parking, there's chargers down the street and as soon as you pull in you're next to a power pole and you can just plug your electric vehicle in and, and charge. Electric chargers on power poles are now being rolled out across the country. And there's a battle over who's going to install them. I went behind the scenes with two companies to see how they'll work. This is where the magic happens, Andrew. Indeed it is. So this is where all of the electrical assembly of the chargers fit out. Do you need a hand? No, that's fine. <laughs> the charger is literally at the front of your front it's door. Should we have a quick look at it? So how do you turn a power pole into an electric vehicle charger? How fast will it charge a car? Who gets to own the infrastructure? And how should it all be paid for? More and more people are buying electric vehicles, but the charging infrastructure is still lagging behind. According to the International Energy Agency, Australia has one of the lowest rates of public charging infrastructure, with just one public charger for every 68 cars. Compare this to Europe, which has one public charger for every 14 cars. There's an important thing to note in that stat. A lot of Australians have off-street parking, unlike a dense city like Paris or Amsterdam. But for places like Sydney's inner west, 67% of residents don't have access to off-street parking. The availability of EV chargers is a major barrier for people considering switching to electric. Outside of the upfront costs, range anxiety, access to charging infrastructure, and the difficulty and stress of planning journeys were among the key reasons people opt not to buy an electric car. Companies like Osgrid and Sydney's startup EVX are hoping to change that by installing chargers onto power poles. First things first, what exactly is a power pole charger? They're designed to work like a home charger would, so they're not exactly fast, but they're also not the slowest. The fastest charger on the planet right now is in China. BYD is pushing the boundaries on technology with a one megawatt EV charger that can fully charge a car in just five minutes. A typical ultra fast or fast charger in Australia uses about a quarter of that at around 250 kilowatts, with a full charge taking 10 minutes to an hour. These new pole mounted chargers are 11 to 22 kilowatts, with a full charge taking a couple of hours or more. It's slightly faster than a home charger, which is usually less than four kilowatts. I suppose the simplest way to explain it is that, you know, over the course of an hour, depending on the car, you're going to get somewhere between 50 and 120 kilometres of charge on a unit like this. When you think about your average daily commute and the capacity of most TVs, you're going to be doing it once a week. And that's the idea. Curbside chargers are easy and relatively cheap to install with a ready power source just waiting to be tapped. The rollout of these chargers is still in its infancy, with only a few pilots underway. And so far, most of them are here in Sydney. I'm going to go behind the scenes with a small startup and a big network company, who are both vying to be the big player in this space. A classic David versus Goliath battle. So let's start with the big guy, Osgrid. They're what's called a distribution network service provider, or a DNSP. Basically, they're the companies who own and maintain the poles and wires. Think power poles and transmission lines. So we'll just get the charging cable out of the boot. Okay, so it's BYO cable. It is. All right. And we take so this. would most people have a cable like this already in their car? Um, if they don't, they can just buy them online quite easily. Yep. Yep. You can get varying lengths. So plug it in here. Yep. And we just run it around, make sure it's not a trip hazard. And then plug it in here. All right, at the front. At the front, this car. Pretty get, simple. Pretty simple. So and then far. you get the phone out of your pocket. 
get the app, touch the screen. Quick login mode, so we're gonna use the app, QR code. You just scan the QR code. That's it, click start charging. Waiting for vehicle, authenticating, and now it's charging. What's the advantage of having electric vehicle chargers on power poles? The advantage of power poles is one, we have 440,000 of them. Uh, two, they're readily available. You can see them down the street. Three, they've got power available. And uh, four, it's very easy to install. It minimizes community uh, impact and disruption. They can be installed in sort of three to four hours and uh, they're ready to go. Small startups competing in this space are also opposed to the network's plan to own charging infrastructure. To find out more, I visited Sydney startup EVX. This is where the magic happens, Andrew. Indeed it is. Um, so this is where all of the electrical assembly of the chargers, the fit out, commissioning, testing happens before we install these out on the street. EVX has rolled out around 200 chargers across New South Wales so far and has a federal government grant to install another 250 chargers across Victoria, South Australia and New South Wales. Okay, so it's Australian technology. Could you maybe talk me through the actual unit itself? The unit's been designed specifically for pole-mounted public domain EV charging. Um, so everything from the chassis is designed to be extraordinarily sort of robust, you know, two and a half mil thick stainless steel with covers and all sorts of cool stuff that, you know, essentially mirrors the kind of industrial design that you would normally see with other pieces of public infrastructure. Um, the technology itself, um, we've developed completely in-house. What we've done here is it's completely modular. Essentially, if something is to go wrong with the unit, that any local qualified electrician can reach in and fix it. What made you want to get into curbside charging and what are some of the advantages of putting these on power poles? I think the advantage here is what we're trying to do is emulate the at-home charging experience for people. People who can't charge at home, maybe can't install the infrastructure or just don't have off-street parking at all, um, then have access to convenience charging in places where the car would have been parked anyway. Sydney's inner west is a prime target for curbside chargers. 67% of residents here don't have off-street parking, compared to 30% statewide. Like many inner city dwellers, a lack of access to charging infrastructure has been holding Danny Alexander back from buying an EV. The charger is literally at your front door. It's right out at the front. It's so convenient. Should we have a quick look? Yeah, absolutely. Until now. It was the news uh, about the, the street lamp pole chargers that fast-tracked some of our thinking on whether we should actually do it. How close are you to buying an electric vehicle now? I am so close and I'm very excited. And do you think this pushed you to make that final leap? I do think so. I think we were a bit surprised with some of the nuances of the uh, of the car parking deal, but really, I mean, the idea of just being able to roll up up the front and be able to charge overnight makes so much sense for us. Australia has one of the lowest rates of public charging infrastructure in the developed world. For many, including electrification expert Dan Cass, installing them on power poles is a no-brainer. The curbside charger is really at a sweet spot because the energy is much cheaper when it gets in your tank. You think of a hot sunny day in Australia, we have too much solar coming off rooftops now into the grid. So imagine if you could park your car in the community doing whatever you normally need to do. If you could plug your car in then and soak up that excess solar, you're helping the grid. Regulations currently limit networks to maintaining physical infrastructure and prevent them from providing services. For now, Ausgrid is leasing out their power poles to commercial providers, including their subsidiary, a company called Plus ES. But they're lobbying for a change that would allow them to own and install the charges themselves. What we're trying to do is extend the regulation to our, allow us to own and maintain the hardware, just as we own and maintain the power poles and the wires that go to it. But we don't want to change the way, way in which the energy is sold, nor the competition around the way in which the energy is sold. So why should it be the distribution networks that are in charge of this? Because we already own the power poles, we already distribute the electricity, we maintain the network to a very high standard, and we want to be able to create competition 
competition at the curb. So we want to create competition at the sale of energy through these chargers. So what we want to do is own and maintain the chargers, but not operate them. But there are concerns about the distributor's bid to own and operate the curbside chargers. One is competition. Imagine if all the petrol stations in the country were owned by the same operator. We think probably there should be contestability for the installation of all of this infrastructure. And the other is the cost to all electricity consumers. If the distribution networks own this infrastructure, they could pass the cost on to everyone. Well, the electricity networks can pass on the cost of uh, everything that they install and that is fair and reasonable that they need to get a return, but it is a monopoly and consumers can't opt out. The question of who should install them and how fast is up for debate. We need to think very carefully before handing a, a potentially very large cheque to existing monopolies. But it is really important for the country that we accelerate charging and we accelerate the uptake of EVs.